Welcome to ePortfolio Introduction Part 1. This is the first video in a series of four designed to help you get started with our ePortfolio project for the semester. Before you begin, make sure that you're prepared for the learning that lies ahead. That means that you're going to want to make sure that you have any materials that you would need in order to effectively take notes. Our ePortfolio introduction is a series of four videos, again designed to get you started with this particular project. In this first video, we'll get acquainted with the ePortfolio. We'll understand how we define it for our course and take a look at the process for completing the ePortfolio. In our second video, we're going to dive into the anatomy of our ePortfolio. This means we're going to look at all of the pieces and parts. Um, and begin to gain an understanding of the overall view of this particular project. In our third video, we're going to jump in. This means that we're going to introduce ourselves to the web design platform that we will use for this project called Wix. And in the fourth video, we're going to simply focus on developing the home page of your ePortfolio. So as you can see, each of these four are designed to go from a very general overview all the way down to getting started with that first piece. As such, our guiding questions for this particular video include how do we define writing and composing? What is an ePortfolio? And what parallels do we see between the writing or composing of an essay and the writing or composing of an ePortfolio? Let's get started. The first question we want to ask ourselves is, what is writing or composing? And we begin this question just to get an understanding of how we view writing currently and perhaps see how maybe our definition of writing might broaden or widen based on this particular project. For example, you may define writing as simply writing essays, let's say for the course, um, or writing notes to yourself. You may consider writing and composing as in music, putting together a score or bringing together the lyrics for a song. What about social media? Many of us engage in various forms of social media, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Do we call that writing? What about websites? Do we consider that a form of writing? These are the questions that we really want to consider as we walk through this first video. Before we move forward though, let's do a quick reminder of this particular slide that we saw a couple of weeks ago as we began when we looked at the writing process itself. When we think of the writing process, often we think of these stages of pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. And as you notice from this particular infographic, we learn that writing is not a linear process where pre-writing ends and drafting begins. It's not as neat um, as that particular linear process. Instead, it's, it's a wonderfully chaotic process of understanding that our writing is recursive in nature. And this means that we're going to go back and forth between these stages as we walk through whatever our writing goal is. So let's look at the ePortfolio for just a minute. And the infographic on the right kind of outlines the process for developing an ePortfolio. You notice in this process you have things like reflect, create, archive, publish, feedback, edit, which look very similar to the writing process that you might think of with regards to putting together that first essay. So when we think of a portfolio or an e-portfolio, we're going to define it as a purposeful collection and curation of course artifacts. And by artifacts, I mean the writing assignments that we do in our course. They illustrate and showcase our efforts, our progress, and our learning across time. 
So we have these writing assignments that we complete. For example, we just completed that first essay. If we were to just leave the essay as is, you get your grade and we move forward. While it may have been a valuable learning experience, if we were to take that particular essay, go back into the essay, but what if we were to put it somewhere else that allows us to then archive it and then come back to it and look, let's say at the end of the semester, you'd be able to see that learning across time because you will have archived that first piece. The artifacts or the assignments that we do are going to be reimagined from their original text and they're assembled in a web page using the affordances and expectations of the digital space. We're going to go into this in much greater detail in just a little bit. So what can this do for you? The ePortfolio provides opportunities to compose in a digital space, a public digital space, which many of us are familiar with right now, considering you accessed a website to get here. Many of us engage in social media, so we're already familiar with writing or composing in that public digital space. Connecting our writing or composing process across multiple genres. In other words, we completed an essay assignment. In that assignment, you wrote on a white page, black text on a white page. We're now going to think about moving that into a space that allows you to add things like images, hyperlinks. It allows you to look at where your text might go in relation to an image. So now what we're doing is we're really understanding that our composing or writing process is not just constrained to that one type of writing. It also allows you to collect and curate the artifacts or assignments that demonstrate and showcase the learning across time. And because we use a lot of reflection in our course, it's going to allow you to really look at those artifacts or assignments and think about how that learning has taken place and contextualizing that learning throughout our course. In many ways, I always think of the ePortfolio as three things. A mirror, because it allows you to see yourself over time. A map, because the reflection allows you to move into a plan on where you would like to go in your own process as you set those goals throughout our semester. And then a muse. An ePortfolio is very much a creative template. And while there are guidelines as far as the artifacts that will go into the ePortfolios, how you compose those artifacts, how you design your web page, which audience you are choosing to compose for is completely up to you. So it allows you to not only showcase your work over time, but it also allows you to showcase your creativity. So our next question is, where is the ePortfolio located? A simple answer is this. Your ePortfolio will become your very own website. This means that you are going to develop a website that showcases you. When we think about the assignment overall, we're going to begin to look at it in terms of steps. So while we get to that step five and you see the final ePortfolio, you see that prior to that, there are many steps that we will take along the way together in order to really bring an effective learning outcome to this particular project. We are right now in that step one. That means that by the end of these four videos, you will begin to develop a draft for your home page, and then you'll send it in. You will submit that just to get some quick uh, formative feedback. Now, notice I said draft, because along the way, as you evolve in your comfort level with regards to the ePortfolio and the Wix website uh, platform that we use, you'll begin to shift things around. You'll begin to go back into that home page. You might get some other ideas as we walk through. So each one of the 
learning activity grades are meant for you to take part in that writing, recursive writing process where you are drafting and editing and revising based on one, your own experiences with the platform and what you understand about the ePortfolio and two, some of the feedback that I might offer. You notice that each of the first four grades are learning activity grades. That means they're very low stakes grades. Again, it is meant to one, help you build the portfolio in very um, defined steps that allows you to get comfortable with this project and how we're doing it while getting some feedback along the way that will help you in the revision process. It's only till uh, when we get to step five where it says final ePortfolio, where you will submit that final project grade, which is the project grade that is listed in our syllabus. This doesn't happen until the end of the semester, and the due date is listed on our syllabus. So I want us to think of the ePortfolio in much the same way that we think of writing or composing as a recursive process. First, we're going to write or complete the essay artifacts and assignments. Up until this point, we have completed one of those essays. We are then going to reflect each time we write an essay so that we can reflect on the strengths of our process and things that we would like to further strengthen moving forward. Then we're going to reimagine and assemble that particular artifact or essay into our website and publish it in that digital space. So if you take a look at this recursive cycle that I'm using to discuss the ePortfolio, you can begin to see how it parallels or could parallel or allows us to think about the writing composing process that is not just text on a page, but it actually includes much more. So is this writing? Is this composing? Well, if we think about it in terms of a rhetorical situation, which is where we have a writer, we have a subject, we have an audience, you notice that there's a purpose, we have a context. And if we take a look at our essays, we definitely have a writer, that would be you. You have a subject, that would be the topic that you are writing on. You have a genre, that means what kind of essay did you write? You definitely have an audience, who are you writing this for? What about a website? What about an e-portfolio website? Do we have a writer or composer? Do we have an audience? Is there a subject? We're using the genre of a website, of a digital web space. There are certain things that your audience is going to expect because they are viewing your work in a website. So if we look at these three things, with the rhetorical situation being in the middle, think about how you might bring some parallels or comparisons to writing in the, in the textual sense, like the essay, and then writing in the sense of developing a website. Now that we've completed this brief introduction, you're gonna move over to the brief reflection assignment based on this video and complete that, and then move to video number two, which is gonna discuss the anatomy of our ePortfolio and give us a first glimpse into some examples. Thank you for watching, and remember, you can always come back to this video as many times as you need to. Now you can head back to Canvas and continue in this week's module. Thank you.